by a pal. Hello. Um, thank you very much. Thank you to the LRC for inviting me. Um, I should say I'm not a Labour member, but it's great that I'm still on the panel and, and that we can discuss these things here today. So, um, I guess uh, I don't need to say anything more about my introduction. Um, I, I'm interested in the title of the meeting in terms of free state education, because I think um, the battles that I've been experiencing and the ones I've been hearing about today, uh, we're far from fighting for free state education, but I think it's very important that we actually keep uh, these kind of big in ideological campaigns and, and big principles uh, ahead of us, uh, and that we don't get stuck in this nitty gritty managerial detail, which is really what uh, stops a lot of people campaigning and, um, and, and stops the kind of broader vision, I think, to, to, to build. So I think that's important. Um, I guess I wanted to make um, two points and hopefully three points at the end if I have time. Uh, I'd like to say something about, um, I'll, I'll give a bit of an introduction to the, to the campaign for those who don't know what's been happening at Sussex and then talk a bit about uh, relinking um, aspects of the campus community and that's been the real strength of the campaign in terms of linking students, staff, academic staff and services staff. Um, and then I'll talk about the mix of strategies that we employed in the campaign and, and ho hopefully at the end say something a bit about Quebec and, and my experience there which was really uh, enlightening. So the, the campaign, the um, privatisation outsourcing as management has renamed it, uh, started May last year exactly and um, the plans were announced to uh, the free trade unions uh, separately and the free trade union reps were uh, officers were called in by management separately as well. So again, these kind of tactics to constantly put people, uh, not let people organize together. Um, so these plans were announced, uh, the plans was published in the European Journal uh, to attract interest from bidders. Um, and the campaign was started uh, very soon afterwards um, and has been going on strength by strength since then. Um, and it's important to stress that the, uh, so that the, the outsourcing concerned 25% uh, of the uh, workforce on campus. So we're talking about uh, 235 members of staff. Uh, you'll notice some of the badges that uh, people are wearing. And um, concerns all services such as printing, estates, uh, catering, um, all services linked to the basically functioning of the university. Um, so extremely important, but usually sidelined services. So um, I can come back in the questions or maybe the details of the campaign, some of you may know, so I, I don't want to uh, take too much time here. Um, but what we tried to do as a student at the time, I was staff, uh, teaching <coughs> staff, uh, but also student, uh, was to have weekly meetings, make sure that we met with the three different unions, um, try to uh, inform the, the student community of what we were doing, of the outsourcing process, which was complicated in itself, and the management obviously constantly refusing to give out information. And this was really the main line of the campaign for the first few months, is just trying to figure out what was happening. And again, something that relates to uh, what the first speaker was saying, Warren. So um, just holding regular meetings, events uh, with guest speakers, Obviously, uh, the trade union is very much involved in getting freedom of information requests. Um, so trying to, to relink the fragmented parts of the university. And what, what came out of that was an incredible sense of community that has been regained. And we've had members of staff come up to us and, and very emotionally uh, and say, suddenly we felt part of the community again. And we've held like photo exhibitions about all the different workers on campus, uh, and people who are saying to say, "Well, we thought that nobody cared about us anymore," and we now know that people do care, whether that's students or the academic staff, and, that, and that's been really the most amazing thing for us and for people involved, and who are scared of losing their pensions and losing their their jobs. Um, because all this is still very uncertain throughout the process, even though management keeps on assuring us that everything will be fine and not to worry. We know better than that. Um, so incredibly, incredible 
process of relinking parts of the, the, the campus community. Um, and then I think with the important second point I wanted to mention was a mix of strategies. And this is something that, in terms of, of how to go forward in terms of campaigning. Um, and I think obviously we still kept all the traditional means of campaigning, um, flyering, door knocking, uh, having a stall on the library square on campus uh, whenever possible, demonstrations, guests, events, um, all these continuously working with the unions um, and trying to, to figure out how each was, was of the different workers were affiliated and, and how to understand all these different processes and relay that information as well because I mean I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert obviously uh, um, I'm a union member but I, I'm not working for the union so it's just been a pr an interesting process to learn about or how all these things um, work so uh, that's been one aspect so the kind of traditional uh, uh, means but there's also uh, been a lot of less traditional means employed um, and so by January, we, the campaign was, was stalling, we were kind of to, starting to lose interest, and we decided to really step up a gear. So we um, started a visibility campaign, and you'll see I'm wearing a yellow square. So this is something we took from Quebec, and that we started plastering all the walls on Sussex campus with a yellow square. And we, so we went into um, offices, and we asked uh, academic staff and rest of the staff professional services staff to put yellow squares in their windows. And the effect of that was unbelievable. So you walk along, walk around Sussex campus at the moment and you just see yellow squares everywhere. And the fact that they were in people's offices, management couldn't tear them down. So, because you can put posters up all over time across buildings, but usually they're not in private spaces so they get taken down the, the, the same evening and we've had that experience. But here, if in people's offices, they just couldn't. So just little things like that were really important. Um, so, you know, really working on that visibility campaign, uh, again with the unions as well, unions were producing a lot of badges and a lot of flyers and posters. Um, and then we went into occupation. So this you might have heard about. We had a two month long occupation of a conference center. Um, and this was a fantastic event. This is what called, got us in, um, national uh, coverage for two months. We had articles in, in, in every newspaper. Uh, we've had made, given interviews across the world. Uh, there's been incredible interest and, and just through incredible work from a lot of the students and Michael here will speak more about this. Um, so the occupation was a great space in terms of recreating that unity and in terms of saying we're not fragmented and we can try and, 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 and rethink education as a process in which we're all involved and engaged with and which is not a commercial transaction. And that has been so important. My experience teaching uh, in the last year in terms of students going from 3,000 to 9,000 fees, the difference is that students have been coming less into class than they did even before. They're doing even less of the reading. And that seems completely crazy because they're paying more. But it seems that because they're paying more, they feel even less inclined to do what is expected of them. Now, I don't know if this is something, this is just a very first-hand experience of what I've seen this year, and we, maybe we can discuss that, but this idea of uh, this kind of lack of, of responsibility uh, through this transaction process, this consumer-led education, is, is extremely worrying and one we really need to combat. And the occupation was a space where people were re-engaging voluntarily with education and with different means of doing education. Uh, so that was extremely important. Uh, and finally, I guess I should say something about the pop-up union. Uh, and that's uh, been a process that started a month or two ago, maybe. So it's at the end of a year-long campaign um, and a lot of frustration with uh, the way the unions were being treated by the management in terms of constantly being kept in the dark, uh, in terms of the dif difficulty of liaising, um, or, you know, of, of the different... Uh, stratifications in the unions and a lack of resources, obviously, and the unions themselves being squeezed uh, from all the different policies. So all these different forces coalescing to a lot of the members, uh, the workers um, and people involved in the campaign being frustrated and saying we need to find something, we need to do something else um, to try another way. And I guess, I mean, my view on this is that the pop-up union is an additional tool through which to fight basically outsourcing or any other issue in education at the moment um, or, or any other sector 
anyway. So in terms of just trying to get together and find original creative means to fight. Um, now there's a lot of obviously debate and discussion about uh, a single issue union, independent union. It hasn't really ever worked as far as I know uh, in Britain. There's been attempts, but it's always been problematic. Uh, we'll see, we're stage at which we're at now. Um, we have more membership than a lot of the unions on the campus at the minute. Um, we today um, sent a notification uh, of intention to strike, uh, to ballot to strike, uh, was sent to the University of Sussex today. Um, and so we will start the ballot on the 6th of June. Uh, and we were certified um, of two weeks ago, I think, as a trade union, so we are certified. Um, and we're seeing how it goes. I had a meeting uh, yesterday with members and with workers affected and who are definitely wanting to take some kind of action. So we're going to discuss what kind of action that would be. We obviously don't want to just um, uh, go on strike without thinking carefully about what that entails. And, and obviously we're still continuing conversations with the rest of the <coughs> trade unions. Um, and we want to make that as much of an inclusive process as possible. Um, but it's obviously all a bit, not, I don't want to say on the cuff, but we're working things out a bit as it goes. And, and obviously as much advice or support that we can get for that would be fantastic. Um, but it's putting pressure, it already has put pressure on management and on the other trade unions who actually um, started a consultative ballot two weeks ago and we had 70-80% response to um, the possibility of industrial uh, of, um, of action. So, and we've also gained, um, uh, in terms of pensions, the negotiations over pensions that the trade union has been involved with have definitely gained from the campaign and from the pressure of the public union. So these are positive things. Um, I guess I need to stop. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave it there. Maybe I can say something in the questions about Quebec if anybody's interested uh, and my experience there. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you.